Yeah, baby, that's what we've been waiting for. That's what it's all about. Woohoo! Yeah, man, we won. We have won. We have taken the White House, my fellow compatriots and my fellow, my fellow Americans. It is time for baseness to come into the White House and for wokeness to finally take a end. A pitiful, pitiful existence. The uh, the woke people are. What? It's cool. It's Oh, Trump, it was one, Trump 2024 to 2028. Let's go. It's finally time. Pack your shit, Kamala. Pack your shit, Biden. It's time for a real strong American to take the, the steering wheel to drive the US into the proper direction. It is time for those lip tarts to pack their shit and Get the fuck out of the country. Get back to where you came from, illegal immigrants. Get the fuck out of our country. It's time that we, the real American people, take this country and bring it to the utmost glory that it deserves. Okay. I think I've done my bit. So, this video that I will be making right now... Oh my god, okay. I, I don't like wearing hats. They they uh, actually mess my hair a lot. The only hat that I wear is like headphones. And that's because I have to. Anyway. I want to... I wanted to make this video uh, in the light of uh, the election results of um, 2024. And, well, I want to congratulate um, Donald Trump for actually winning the majority vote after being cucked out of it for like two years. Uh, arguably depends on who you ask, because uh, some people might say that 2020 was stolen and hey man, like I I'm not, I'm not getting into that. I'm not, no, I'm not touching that subject with like a 10 foot pole. No, that's not what this is about. This was a uh, congratulations to Trump for actually winning the majority vote. And I wanted to bring the light and discuss some things moving forward depending on how things turn out to be i i don't i cannot predict the future i that's that's way way um past my human limits i don't know what's going to happen in the future considering the fact that uh republicans now hold the majority of both the white house the senate and the supreme court i don't know what that will mean depending on what moving blocks will be at play moving forward in the years 2024 to, to, to 2028. However, there are some things that will affect me as like a European person that I feel like I am compelled, compelled to make a video to let you guys know about this in case things turn out the way that I suspect that they will. I don't say that they will, but I have, I don't have a lot of hope that they won't, okay? Let's just say it like that. And before people go into say, no, you're anti-democratic, you are a fucking liptard yourself, you are playing up the, the fucking jig, you, you are a fake, uh, you, you are a fake personality for putting up that egg, man, fuck you. Um, I want to say something to you. Uh, actually, this hat that, oops, this hat that I have right here, this was not bought ironically. Like, this I received in like 2019, 2020, when I still had like a um, sort of a uh, Republican view or like a uh, conservative view. I'm actually, you will be surprised to find out that from a lot of perspectives, I might be more conservative than you would have wanted to. Not because I feel like, uh, I am in line with most conservative views, but it's more because um, I actually got dunked on and marginalized by actual people who, who I felt were more uh, progressive. I think I actually experienced what most uh, what most young men that have voted for Trump have experienced uh, in. Uh, what was it? I think it was in it was in high school. Yeah, it was in high school where I experienced this. Not so much college. College was kind of like a wash because it was 2020 to like 2024. 
like two and a half years were spent uh, online. I didn't basically interact with anybody besides like some people online. That's fine by me. I don't particularly, I'm not a particularly outgoing person. And I actually, um, I have a lot of traits that would lead you to believe that I am more conservative than uh, what my views are. Because like I am against moving out of my hometown. I am against uh, a lot of like things changing. I don't like things that when they change. I don't. I don't. I never vibe with it. I'm uh, anti transistasis. You can look that term up. Transistasis is when like it's it's a uh, organism that is like in change. I am against that. I am pro homeostasis when things remain the same. I, I am pro maintaining the status quo. However, in the meantime, I have uh, seen that this is not how the world works because nothing remains the same. And being a conservative um, is kind of like being against the flow of time. Yeah, I get it that it's supposed to be like conserve what is... I don't like the word conserve. It, it, I think preserve is more of a... <laughs> adequate term but you can't say preservative because that's something completely different <laughs> besides the point so you preserve you're supposed to preserve um the morals that you hold on to but i have realized that a lot of the morals are subjective and by realizing that i have changed my view the views myself so i went from straight alt-right i mean that alt-right com not completely alt-right like actual top like top right of the political charts there are some there are some screenshots from what my discord used to look like and listen man i'm telling you i pendulated from all the way over there to all the way over to the left and i'm now at the dead center because I have realized that it's much better to cherry pick, like from both sides, the um, the things that brings um, more people together for like a, in like in unison. We, we don't want to be separated as like people because uh, separation brings forth like the things that you see right now happening in like the United States, where like. Uh, people who are on the uh, Republican side are trashing like the people who are on the Democratic side because of the differences in like their beliefs and their morals. And that's why morals are kind of subjective depending on what those morals entail. There's a lot of uh, gray area in between that people are not comfortable to say that it's a gray area. And as such, the uh, problems that the United States are facing arise and you can see them on social media because of that. Now, what does this have to do with the video that I'm going to make, uh, that, I'm, that I'm making right now? Well, considering the fact that Trump has uh, won the election and that Trump was vehemently, and you can see that for like a lot of the people that are supporting uh, the Republican win, they are also pro-isolationist and they are pro-exiting NATO. Now, I can explain to you why pro-isolationism is not a right for the right path forward. There are, a lot of, there are a lot of countries, including my own, that have taken the pro-isolationist export-only uh, strategy for building their economy and have failed horribly. We are talking about North Korea, we are talking about Romania, my home country, that have tried these things in separate, like, North Korea is still doing this to this very day. They refuse to import almost anything and they are trying to export everything. Look at how much their economy fucking sucks and how much it's tanking. It's not a right way. And when I'm talking about Romania, I'm talking about the Ceausescu regiment, which was a uh, regime that tried to owe Romania the superpower of doing everything. Do you know what happened with that? People fucking starved. They, they didn't have anything to eat. It doesn't matter. It was communism. It's, that's not a problem. Like, yeah, communism wasn't all that great what it made up to be. But the problem was the authoritari uh, authoritarianism that came along with the communistic uh, aspect. They try to implement the Juche system or like something like the Juche system where they try to get rid of the national debt by uh, secluding ourselves from the rest of the uh, from the rest of the world and only export, 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 export. 
what happened was people starved. They didn't have basic necessities. They didn't have right amount of things because you are supposed to rely on trade with partners to help out in the regions that you lack the most of. But people don't see this. They see that, oh, we can do this and that. Well, how about the fact that the import of processors and like the hardware that comes from China will now get taxed by the tariffs that Trump will impose and there is nothing that Americans will be able to do about it because there is no infrastructure and barely any fucking uh, fabs in America to make the chips that make your graphics uh, like your graphics cards, your processors, uh, microcontrollers, all of those get so outsourced from TSMC and like the Chinese sphere. What do you think is going to happen with those? Do you think that those are going to go down in price? No! Trump is going to impose a tariff of like 60% or whatever the fuck he wants to impose. Maybe this is where the uh, speculation parts come in because I don't know what he's going to do. He did this last time with his uh, tariffs on like a bunch of different things. And that d d it didn't pan out as good as he thought it would. We'll see what he's going to do this time around. But let me tell you something. If you, if you voted for Trump because you thought that your groceries are going to go down, holy shit, you are in for a rude awakening. And I can't, I'm kind of interested to see how uh, the people who have voted for him and like see that the prices won't go down because of like these supposed tariffs that he has imposed will continuously to like the, the, uh, the chart for like the basic cost of things is going to go way up for the things that cannot be produced in like um, in like the, um, the United States. So I will be interested to see that. But coming to the isolationist part and why I said that I, why, what this has to do with NATO is because he wants to pull out of NATO. Now, by doing this, he would basically abandon uh, Europe and well, it's basically Europe because NATO was made in like, I think it was the 50s when, um, when it was General Dwight Eisenhower who has uh, demanded for a protectorate for uh, Europe against uh, potential Russian aggression. And, it, and that's how NATO kind of started out. So it's basically Europe versus Russia, the opposition thing which I'm a bit concerned considering the fact that a lot of people from like the Republican side are, are, uh, are kind of like, it's better if I'm uh, pro-Russia than if I'm pro-communism, which is like, what the fuck, bro? Do you know that communism came from Russia? Are you, are you sure you want to take that stance? I mean, it's not as much communism nowadays as it is like some sort of weird imperialism where like they just suppress a bunch of, a bunch of uh, ideas. It's like literally 1984 but for real like that's what uh, russia is and i can understand that you want to suppress other people's opinion but i don't think that that's that's something that you really want because if you so happen to have a particular thought that you want to express and you think it's safe to express you might be subjected to the same uh, to the same um uh authoritarian uh, uh wrong think and get imprisoned for it while you were like, no, but like, what? How can it? How can this be? Them, I thought my, I was, I was aligned with them. Well, unfortunately, uh, like dictators and authoritarians don't particularly like everything that you think, and if you don't align like ninety nine percent with what they think, ooh, ooh, you you're gonna get some. Uh, you're gonna be in for a rude awakening. Ooh, I mean, like. Um, how should I how should I tell you? Like Romania has experienced this. Like uh, you might not have experienced this uh, U.S. There are some things that oh, but like imprisonment for this and that because we said that no. Well, you didn't really experience the full brunt of what it means to have an authoritarian uh, regime. I pray you don't because it's not good. It's not what you think it is. There are a lot of things like even if it's like good for now. If somebody else comes in with way harsher uh, restrictions on, on what you think, you're not gonna like it. You're not gonna like it. That's what ki that's kind of what happened with Romania. Where like uh, he wa he was all nice. Oh yeah, the economy is booming. This was that. Do, do, this and that and this and that. And like the 60s to the 70s, and then something suddenly changed when the when the dictator Ceausescu went to North Korea and he came back and a lot of things just changed all of a sudden no more expression of whatever like it was it was bad 
So be careful with that isolationist uh, strategy and specifically more about like withdrawing from NATO because you might lose the European partners that are willing to work with you to Russian ones, to like basically Russian oblasts. Um, and well, once you realize that or you come to the realization that holy shit, maybe it's not so good of an idea if we lose uh, the European partners because there is a lot of benefits that i feel like people do not consider when working with europe and like uh, a lot of things that uh help out the americans because we try to work together with them and like there's a bunch of different things that are like uh like it usually trade is beneficial is what i'm trying to say trade with uh partners that are more or less allied with what you what with your uh ideologies is usually beneficial and by imposing those tariffs and the the isolationist uh ideology i i feel like um i feel like it's going to uh cause some sort of rift that i do not particularly uh, like and uh i mean like it's just it's just my vibes i, I don't feel like it's it's the right thing to do but who knows what is the right thing to do? Who, who am I? I'm not God. I'm just a guy on the internet who is saying his things from like the things that he has studied and like the trends of the past and like, uh, yeah. But coming back to the NATO thing, you would actually be surprised. Like you would say, no, but you, you fucking Romanian, you, you fucking, uh, uh, you, you Roma people and uh, you don't pay anything to fucking NATO. You, 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 what is the contribution? Um, I would have you know that, first of all, if you think that Romania is not aligned with, like, a uh, uh, Republican Party, uh, let me show you something. Let me see if I can uh, swap over. Um, let me show you something. Um, okay, I'm going to change this. And, uh, okay. So, this is something that happened in 2019. Make Romania great again? Donald Trump gives counterpart Klaus Johannes a special present. There it is. A once in a lifetime single made special for this meeting. Make Romania great again hat. Because, because there are a lot of things that Romania had in common with the views of Trump. And actually, Romania has a mandate for fulfilling its duties to nato ever since nato's uh ad ever since the admission to nato this is something that was has been codified into our law so we are paying our share more than enough for like what trump has imposed on other countries you'll be surprised to find that the netherlands however is on the lower side of uh, paying its duties and listen to this uh message with the cap that donald trump gave his romanian counterpart Slogan uh, tweaked the one step to 2016, handed, the gift was handed to Johannes as he visited the White House on Tuesday. Uh, Facebook sharing the cap on, meeting shared the laugh, uh, discuss issues such as regional security, energy, law enforcement and the visa waiver program. Stated, stated from the White House, both countries were opposed. Both countries were opposed. That means Johannes agreed with Donald Trump. To Nord Stream 2, that's like the uh, Russian gas pipeline that Germany so liked to hold on so much, um, thanks to Scholz. Um, a new export gas pipeline running from Russia to Europe across the Baltic Sea. Yes. The United States and Romania recognize that energy security is a national, uh, is a national uh, security, it said. We underscore our opposition to Nord Stream 2 and other projects that make our allies and partners dependent on energy from Russia. Natural gas resources in Romania have the potential to increase the prosperity of our nations and enhance Europe's energy security. This came, all of this came from Trump. That wasn't anybody else. That was a discussion that these two, uh, that these two guys have had in the meeting on, in 2019. United States and Romania will consider how best to improve the energy investment to climate in Romania and the ways that we have benefit both countries. That's what I'm saying. US and Romania, at least these countries, my, my country cooperates pretty decently well with the United States, no matter like uh, the, regime, the, regime the regime change. However, I'm much more worried for every other country that might not be exactly the same. I don't know how the other countries have cooperated with uh, 
United States in the past. However, like there are a lot of things that Romania uh, Romanians have in common, including the fact that the uh, Christian nationalism that uh, liberals were go is going uh, <clears throat> are going to say as like a uh, religious belief. Well, well, this country is run on like orthodox uh, Christianity, which is like dare I say the more extreme uh side of um side of uh side of um, christianity like even more so than uh catholicism like catholicism uh under pope francis has allowed uh same-sex marriage and uh you know you can look up how much more progressive uh catholicism is as compared to um as compared to orthodoxy and i'm telling you there is a much more of a demographic overlap uh, from like the orthodox side of things with like the way that uh, Americans view Christianity not so much for like this uh, idolatry part where like you kind of make uh, like Trump as like a vital talking point in the churches and whatever the fuck it's more about Jesus and what Jesus could have meant for like recent times but that's like getting into nitty gritty details that I don't particularly need to discuss all that much because that's not the point of this video. So yeah, we further urge industries to work together with Romania, civil nuclear energy goals. So yeah, I mean, I'm not particularly all that afraid um, about NATO. And this is this is the, the talking point that um, that the, uh, Donald Trump has made about like, uh, it's time to pay the bills. Well, I mean, he asked for a 2% GDP uh payment like from it's obviously like based from on the country's gdp it's, it's, it's not going to fucking start demanding oh you you pay this amount of money right now no it's a pay percentage on gdp because like it's it, it's absurd to ask of romania like the same amount of money like let's say like uh uh 500 million or whatever the fuck uh, i don't know i'm just giving uh, or 500 billion dollars uh, which is which will be much more inclined in line with uh, with um, Germany's uh, GDP because I'm gonna be honest like Romania is not that great of a uh, economic powerhouse it's, it's just not everybody knows that Germany Netherlands Belgium France uh, UK are all much more uh, are a lot more worth than fucking Romania and yet still like it's paying 2.25% of the GDP, which is apparently uh, $8,644 million uh, out of uh, 3 point, $383 billion. I don't know how these things work, but what I do know is that th this is an accurate standing, like Romania has paid its share in uh, its share for like the defense and the Na the NATO treaty that uh, Trump is talking about. However, if you go down here, oh, look who look who is be behind. So so we have Slovakia, we have the Netherlands, we have Croatia, Portugal, Italy, Canada apparently, Belgium, Luxembourg, Slovenia, Spain, like all of these countries which are technically much more capable to pay this then Romania is like Romania has a lot of financial problems that a lot of people may not be familiar with because they don't live in Romania. So nah. no matter how much of a great country it is, it's just not a economic powerhouse like the rest of the people. And yet still it's in the top 10 uh, countries out of like, what, 32? Uh, 2000, how many countries are in? Uh, let me see. It's, it's set somewhere around here. The 12 member states. 32. There are currently 32 NATO members. Uh, excluded are Sweden and Finland because they joined somewhat recently. So I don't... even Although they joined recently, Finland at least has also been contributing its uh, fair share. Same, same like with Norway. But I think Norway already was in like the... Uh, the it's just Sweden that joined recently. Oh, but they're... Uh, okay. No, they're paying their, their fair share. Yeah, but it's like top 10 in like uh, countries that are spending for NATO. Now, why am I bringing this up? Because I'm going to give you guys the following ultimatum. And I'm, very, I'm, very, I'm being very serious. If, and this is a big if, this is a very big if, if things happen in the White House so that Trump actually wants to abandon the NATO allies 
and Russia gets much bolder and tries to actually push for an imperialistic expansion into European countries. I don't know if this is something. I'm not a I'm not a general. I'm not a field marshal to ab to be able to like uh, accurately assess uh, these things. These are not up for me to decide. I don't know, but these are my feelings, and I can only base th these off of feelings. If Russia and more well, more specifically Putin decides that he hasn't had enough and is trying to push into actually getting into uh, European territories, the, the matter of fact is the countries that are bordering on Ukraine and implicitly Russia are Belarus, Lithuania, Latvia, uh, Estonia, Finland, Moldova and Romania. However, out of all of these nations, very recently, Putin has said that he does not recognize uh, Moldova. And that worries me because the trajectory, like, yeah, the Baltic uh, states are also at risk of having their uh, space invaded. But I have a feeling that the trajectory is going to be this. And if this is the case, and like there's a lot of ifs, and if this is the case, and Romania decides that it will enact like the mandatory conscription, very important what I'm going to say next. If Romania will enact this, uh, because it is in discussion, like uh, it is in discussion. Let me see if I can find this uh, somewhere, somewhere. Uh, where is it? Uh, where was that uh, photo that I saw? Ah, here we go. Let me, t let me take this from here. If it wants to enact mandatory uh, enlisting, legislative developments, a new military national defense law proposed by Military of National Defense suggests a potential return to mandatory military service, but it has not yet been enacted. The introduction of this law, Parliament, uh, parliamentary circuit has been delayed partly due to the 2024 electoral year with expectations for prioritization in 2025. The push for mandatory service is driven by concerns over national defense readiness, especially in light of regional security threats. There is significant public debate and misinformation regarding the, the reintroduction of mandatory service with official statements clarifying that no immediate plans are in place. However, that doesn't mean that it might not be implemented in the future. Now, where do I want to get with this? I will be very clear, and this is my current uh, statement, and I don't think I'm going to change it. If the military uh, mandatory conscription shows that up my door, what I'm going to tell them is what, what I'm going to tell you guys is the same what I'm going to uh, tell them if they knock on my door. And this is my final uh, statement on this. If they dare to try to conscript me, someone who has severe mental problems, such as disassociative identity disorder, such as violent OCD, such as bipolarism, such as uh, borderline personality disorder, such as severe mental depression, and such as, what, what was the other one that, what, what was it called? It was like a compulsive obsessive uh, disorder over particular things. I don't remember what the name of it was. But if they dare to conscript me, someone who is like this, who has suffered, oh yeah, it was uh, CPTSD, that's what it was. It's, it's childhood PTSD or like complex PTSD, one of those things. If they try to conscript me, then they should not be surprised if I end up fragging. I'm, very, I'm being very seriously with this. If they should not be surprised if I end up fragging the uh, unit in which I am in and then afterwards paint, my, paint the ceiling red. I'm being very serious about this. I'm not anti-patriotic. I'm not anti-whatever-the-fuck. I'm not pro-Russia. I am not 
any one of those things. I just do not want to fight in a war that is against a imperialistic bullshit fucking trash person who only sees his own personal gain. I do not want to accrue even more PTSD. The one and only bullet that my service weapon will see is going to be my very own cranium. That is conclusive. That is my final decision on this particular matter. If they dare to conscript me for this, that is the end result and I will not concede on that. I will not see any sort of conflict in my lifetime or otherwise I am taking the one and only solution out of this place. Because for too long I have, fi I have felt that I do not belong in this place. And they will give me the final solution to my problem. <laughs> okay, that wasn't, that, that wasn't particularly intended to come out like that, but my point still stands. That is my final decision. I don't care about patriotism. I don't care about nationality. To me, like nations are like a bullshit thing that is like basically a tribe that subscribes to particular beliefs and values. Oh, but they're going to take away your freedoms. And I, I don't care. I don't want to fight. I've, I have fought enough with my own mental health. If this is what they will do, then they should not be surprised for the actions that I am willing to take. And I am willing to take it because I have the, I have said to most of my people, the only difference that I have for why I have not been successful in living this, like leaving this place altogether by this place. I don't mean my country or like, uh, I don't mean my country or, uh, whatever, like this will be my final say in this matter. So if you do not end up seeing anything posted from me, whether it's live streams, shorts, videos, whatever, you know the reason why. I don't know what Trump's plans are. If we're going, still going to have an amicable relationship, I have no problem with Trump. I don't have a problem with Trump. I, I, I only have a problem with his policies. Like I said this uh, on my live streams, I don't particularly have a problem with the people that are like elected. It, it's just like some of the policies that they are, uh, like they are the businessmen of policies. That's what they are, the presidents. They are the, they are the people, like they are the merchants of policies that they bring with, uh, with them. <laughs> Nothing else from my particular uh, perspective. So that is basically what I wanted to say. And also like, uh, I don't know, like I kind of don't like the kind of feeds that have been pushing to me, especially like, listen, I said that I'm a long time Asmongold viewer and I am. And like, I know that he might not agree with everything that Trump says and so on and so forth, but like, Come on, man. Like, I mean, he's just there to fucking farm the, oh, look at the liberals, oh, how they're crying. Can we please move on from this and try to actually, like, I'm talking both liberals and, uh, like, uh, conservatives to actually get together, to get shit done, to actually make this world a better place. Yes, there are a lot of things that moralistically they do not coincide with those two groups. However, there are a lot of other things that I feel like they would be impacted but no, they are too focused on owning the other groups because uh, fucking tribalism 101, I guess. It's all just basically tribalism. Even identity politics is just fucking tribalism 101. Fucking wars behind, between counties is tribalism 101. They, there are so many things that can be boiled down to tribalism and it, it just makes me tired. I, I'm fucking tired of it. I, I, am, I am. I'm so sick and tired of like human nature. And like, the, as I said, two unsuccessful attempts. The third time will be successful because it will be with a handgun. It's not that I didn't try. It's just that I was unsuccessful with the other attempts. Okay. And you do not want to know how it feels like to not be yourself in your own body, to feel like you're being held hostage 
and like there is someone else that is going to just swap in and like replace your current personality with another one. That's how it feels like for me. That's all that I basically wanted to say. And I, I, I repeat, like I was, I'm repeating myself, but I was on both sides of the spectrum. I have enough proof, and there I say even uh, like damning proof that I really was on the same, uh, I was on that uh, alt-right path, like not alt-right, actual like ultra-nationalist, like I know, I know when I see it. And there are a lot of things that I don't particularly like where the things they are going, because I feel like it's in the, um, it's against the best interest of uh, most American people, including the people that have voted for Trump. I hope that he revises some of his economic policies because, listen, the tax cut for the rich people, like, it's not going to help you, man. It's not going to help you, little bro. The rich are not willing to trickle down anything else but their own piss on your face. They are going to trickle down piss from their ultra wealthy mansions or from like their uh, soon to be made uh, Elon Musk uh, spacecraft fucking cars. Maybe we get like just like in Star Wars actual like uh, hovering cars. They're going to fucking trickle down the piss uh, on you because I don't believe that they are, they are for your best interest. Of course they're not. They're there to make money. And those tariffs, do you really think that the corporations will foot the bill? No, it's not going to be the corporations that foot the bill. It's going to be on the American people. The corporations will say, oh, 20% tax on my gains? No, no, no. We are going to raise the cost of the produce that we make plus 20% so that we can recuperate the tariffs that we have paid on the, ta on the, on the tariffs that were implemented by Trump. That's how that works. That's how capitalism sometimes works. Because not every single corporation works for the best interest of its people. And they're not willing to foot the bill. Of course they don't. They want to keep being, to be able to like, have this luxurious lifestyle that a lot of people are striving to get into. But they, it's, it's, it's a, it's a gatekeeping thing. And I can see that it is, it is a gatekeeping because if everybody can live in luxury, then nobody can live in luxury because what does luxury mean anymore? And they don't want that. Of course they don't want that. Like, it's, it's obvious. It's kind of like uh, a beggar comes to you and asks you for like, uh, please, mister, can you please, please give me one dollar? I want to feed my family. And then you start thinking, okay, if I give him one dollar and another person gives him one dollar and another person gives him one dollar, then uh, I won't have as much uh, money and as much influence and that guy will get richer than me and so fuck him. More or less the same mentality. Maybe it's a wrong example, but that's how it feels like to me. So yeah, that's all that I basically wanted uh, to discuss. The, the thing with, like, uh, with conscription, I am sticking to that 100%. I will not, I refuse to fight in any war for any particular reason, whether it's for, trust me, I like having freedom like freedom of not being uh, held accountable for what I'm thinking or like uh, being thought of as a lesser person. I don't, as, I don't subscribe to the notion of like one nation is better than the other. No, maybe one person, depending on their morals and what they have done is better than the other, depending on the seriousness of the things that that person has done or what that person intends to do. I take into account in the intent and Putin has no good intentions for anybody else than himself. And I am someone that is against selfishness, even though that might be hypocritical considering the fact that, well, it is a selfish thing that I am saying because I do not want to fight for freedom yet other people, uh, yet I expect other people to do it for me. That is hypocritical and yes, I'm a hypocrite for saying that. But these are my uh, final say in this particular matter. Th this is the, the topic that I wanted to actually discuss the most today because I see what is going on, like how much, uh, you, how much Zelensky 
and Trump are, are talking, like I've seen a lot of posts today and a lot of uh, things trying to keep US in the NATO because it is a massive detriment to Europe having uh, US pull out its aid and like its uh, world police status and withdraw itself. And I feel like a lot of cascading effects might happen because of that. And I do not look forward to living in a world like that. And those people were going to... And for the people that are going to go into the comments and say, no, boo hoo, boom, boom, climb me a river. Um, just know that I'm actually going to hide your comment from the channel because I don't like that. That's toxic behavior, exactly what I was saying. So, yeah. That's 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 basically my stance. And yes, I would I would much rather take the certain death by my own hands than maybe forced to live through the misery of a war that I don't I didn't even subscribe to. Like there's nothing in it for me. Not for like uh not for like the nation, not for family, not for anything. I have absolutely nothing to fight for. Absolutely nothing. It is a nihilistic perspective. And you know what? I am seriously hoping that after my death, there is no other, there is no form of, uh, of uh, another life or afterlife. I don't hope, I hope it's just pure emptiness. Because personally, I am really tired of existing and I, I've had enough for like one lifetime one lifetime was enough it's more than enough i don't want to oh but what if it could have been like this or what it could no no i've had enough i am a tired soul living in a young body like i have come to this conclusion that i am really someone who does not belong here under no circumstance despite the fact that maybe it is people like me who are the most needed but unfortunately to you guys I do not have the willpower to continue fighting for like what I feel like is the is the right thing. What I feel like is the right thing. I don't know which is the right thing. You don't know that. I'm not. A, I'm not. A, hindsight is twenty twenty, and look what that what that year has brought us. So yeah, um, as I said. Uh, oh yeah, one more last thing. I I don't particularly understand this like. Why is it that actually, like, I don't, I don't understand, like, I feel like most young men who have voted for Trump in this uh, election, they have voted because, like, they feel like they are more lonely. And why do you think that voting for Trump would fix that problem? That's not going to fix anything. Like, uh, like listen to me, man. Like, I am probably the world's biggest incel, and yet somehow I don't hate on women nor on, like, liberals. How can that be? No, that's because you're a liberal. <laughs> no, obviously. No, obviously. That's what Asmongold would say. No. It's just that I have realized that it's not particularly the people. Yes, it is also uh, partly the people at fault for thinking the way that they think. But there's also a lot of environmental um, things that play into that. And I have come to the realization that the world just allows them, this existence just allows the people to come to these conclusions because there's just no, no deterrent. There's just, this existence is absolutely miserable. It is. I'm not talking about, oh, you have, you don't, you don't have access to food. Or you, you, you. No, I'm not talking about that. Like from that perspective, it's, it's probably the best it has ever been in the, in the uh, recent times. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like how uncaring and how unfair the world generally is and how people want to cling onto this world despite the fact of like how unfair this 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 world is. Like imagine you are actually born a female in Sudan. Do you guys know what happens in Sudan? Like the mass uh, the mass game ending from like the females because they're getting conquered and uh, <laughs> They're getting uh, assaulted in a sexual way without their consent. And there's nothing that they can do. And like, there's a bunch of... You guys do not understand just how unfair this world really is. And you know what? It's much better if you don't. Because the people who don't see it that way 
are most are more likely to live long and healthy like from the mental health perspective uh, lifestyles than those who can see it i can see it i can see the discrepancies between like even me and my mom and like how my other parents uh, like my uh, my dad my mom uh, how my grandparents have lived like it's all it's all an unfair blob and i do not want to partake in this any further but like there's no particular reason to put an end to it right now unless what happens as i have described it happens so that's my uh, my stance but like guys i don't think voting for trump will actually get you some pussy man i i, I just i don't think that and i haven't had like pussy myself for like 24 years of my entire life i'm literally the biggest Insta because I think like my looks are the reason why I haven't got into touch with anyone probably also like the fact that I am quite literally autistic like I've done tests for this like there's just like there are a lot of things why I think that it has uh, been the reason why that's uh, like I wasn't able to get into a relationship and it is affecting my mental health a lot like as I said I have nobody to fight for maybe if I had a significant other maybe maybe I would have said okay I do have somebody to fight for but yeah, like, take it from me. I mean, I mean, my experiences are my own and they are unique and they're from my, my own perspective. So I cannot say that yours will be the same. But I don't think voting for a particular uh, party or like, uh, I mean, it's not just being, uh, being uh, lonely and being mocked by, uh, because I, I was also mocked by... Uh, <laughs> By someone that I could I would classify as the SJW, and yet still I somehow um, saw that maybe it's not like that. There is some um, what's the there is some moderation that is needed, and uh, moderation will bring you to like the middle ground. Like I am a centrist. I am quite literally a centrist, and I've mentioned this because of this particular reason, because of the moderation that I was able to exercise by being on both sides of the extremes and converging it to the middle. However, the, this soul searching took me some time, so it's not something you can accomplish overnight. Just letting you know that maybe voting for a, for a, uh, for a political uh, party that you think is more towards men and uh, more macho, like masculinity is subjective. It really is. Like, I'm someone who actually goes to the gym, who actually trains in, like, uh, um, what, what, what is the body-to-body -body combat? Uh, Close-quarter combat. Like, I do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu because I basically lived in a uh, place where I was bullied a lot, where I was actually not, not just verbally assaulted, like... You guys do not understand, like, that video where I described my uh, everything, like, my every single uh, problem, why I am the way that I am right now. That bully was, like, a rich, a kid from a rich uh, multimillionaire, I think even billionaire, that I say. That, is basic, that was also basically a mafioso. He was literally called the, uh, the mafioso of the streets or something like that because of how corrupt he was. And the actual fact is that his dad got into trouble with the anti-terrorist uh, organization from Romania. He was visited by like the gendarmes, bro. That's, that's the kind of guy that I had to face and his bodyguards that were beating me up, smashing against the, I have like the proof that he was actually arrested. It's just that I don't do it because it might actually expose uh, a lot of other things and that I don't particularly know if I want to expose. Although I do have the proof to show you what I mean. He was literally investigated by like uh, the anti-terrorist guard for like the problems that he was causing to like the people around. Like it's just... So, yeah. I don't put masculinity on a pedestal because that is just like a non-essential... Um, it's just non -es a non-essential self-ascribed self trait. I, why should I care what means masculinity? I'm just minding my own business. And honestly, I think that you should too. Just go after what you believe and 
try not to heckle a lot of other people for their own beliefs only if they don't encroach on your own beliefs like just you know if i am a uh if i can be nice to you i expect you i expect you to do the same that's the principle i work on and if you're not nice to me well don't expect me to be nice to you either that concept might be lost on Asmongol though <laughs> he is farming those um SJW, uh, like, uh, crying on social media, like, oh man, I, I bet that that's not gonna, that's not gonna rile up that part of your community. But hey, man, that's your community. That's, uh, that's the people that, uh, you have brought upon yourself. It wasn't always like this. Just saying, because I was there since 2017. Maybe even earlier, I think 2016. I was there at the beginning. I was there when you made when you did those um those uh, mythic runs on uh the Eternal Palace. I think that's what the raid was, the first raid from Legion. So besides the point. That's 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 all. I have nothing else uh, to talk about. Congratulations uh Donald Trump. I hope that we will be able to cooperate as like a nation because we have a lot of things in common with uh, with like Trump, and he admitted to that himself, as I said. Like uh, both countries were opposed. Like uh, not just this, there are a lot of other things that we have agreed upon. So at least for Romania, I wouldn't be particularly, I'm not particularly all that. Uh, I'm not particularly all that. Uh, I'm missing the word, uh, concerned. I'm not that concerned. However, you, you, you never know. So whoever it is that will end up making the policies for those things, I hope at least we can continue to collaborate. And yeah, that, that's, that's all. That's all, guys. Uh, I don't have uh, anything else to add. That was the video. I hope you guys, uh, I mean, there's, what is there to enjoy? <laughs> You might be tuning in for my personality, but that's it. Well, we'll see what's gonna happen with. Holy shit! I don't like wearing caps. This is so uncomfortable. How do people? How can people wear this? It's actually so uncomfortable. I'm not talking about this hat in particular. It's just hats in general, um, or caps. Yeah. Well, that's what I had to say. Uh, I will be going live. You will be finding me live every day on twitch.com uh christo 2708 or on youtube um i am multi-streaming so i mean i do this because i like i want to do this and i do this uh, i try to do this eh, almost every day so yeah that being said thank you all for watching i hope you were able to at least understand where i'm coming from hey land of the free am i right it's a democratically elected president. I have nothing against that. I don't know why you would draw that conclusion, but hey, it's, uh, it's up to you to make uh, individual conclusions for yourself. Well, guys, I hope you have a lovely uh, morning, evening, afternoon. And I'll see you guys in the next video, whichever that might be. Bye-bye.